Hello everybody, Sean Harris appear at the Beer Ramble, back in with another wine review. Third attempt now to do this video because I've been interrupted not once but twice. So today we're looking at Colorossi Sangria. 10% ABV and from the Ernest and Julio Gallo family of wineries. Charles Rossi, uh, Carl Rossi, uh, was a salesman for Ernest and Gallo and started his, began part of the winery in 19, um, 1953, he was a salesman for the winery in 1953. 1962, the Ernest and Gallo, uh, Carl, the Ernest and Gallo Red Mountain Jug Wines became very popular. And remained popular with them until the early 70s when that thing was discontinued. And uh, Ernest and Julio Gallo decided to say, let's make Charles or call the face of the wine and put a name and label some of his wines under his name, Carlo Rossi. Of course, he he married into the family, uh, Mr. Rossi. Uh, so, of course, you see the commercials were very popular back in the 70s. Um, this, as well as, uh, the Taylor, Lake, Lake Taylor, the well, Lake County, Lake Country Taylor wines, as well as the Rio Nidi, Innsbruck, and so on and so forth, so were the popular wines that were advertised on television, where wines that you can get, they're very popular, wines should not be inexpensive and should not be out of the reach for the working man or woman. Or the you know college kids um, back then, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Of course, were there some of their commercials that way they put on television, and then you can enjoy you know hanging around. And I've been kind of very enjoy enjoyed watching some of those commercials lately on on YouTube, and you can see a lot of those commercials you know consistently, um, you know. In terms of how, you know, how they talk to the folks, talk to the people, you know, hey, wine should be enjoyed amongst the masses of everybody. And I totally agree with that. It should be. Um, uh, the sangria right here has a lot of those flavors that I'm looking at. Orange, some grapes, some strawberries, raspberries. Um, everything else, all their favorite fruits, all of it, apples, all of it to combine together, but fermented to give you that sort of that nice fruity feel, but also that it has a little bit of, of a kick to it to kind of make you feel in a very relaxed sort of state. Um... Yeah, recently, as I said, a lot of the red, a lot of the wines, the red wine, I like red wines. Majority of them, I do. All of them are more semi-dry or more bolder, like Cabernet Sauvignon or the Burgund Burgundies or the uh, the ones that are very dry Burgundies, Cabernet Sauvignon, Syrah or Syrah Shiraz. And those are the ones I'll tend to more get and enjoy more often. Never the ones that are kind of fruity. But recently, I've been drying, trying a lot of the wines that are very, have sort of that red blend, whether it be the red blend, red blends or wines like this, like the Sangria or the Rio Nidi Lombrusco that have a little more fruit flavor, a little more presence, a little more. Mm. Uh, enjoyability um, where I can pair it with anything, you know, whether it be fried fish, you know, some fried chicken, whether it be some, you know, oysters, um, clams, you know, or a seafood boil or, or, or crawfish. 
eating some nice crawfish and, and this type of wine is chilled, you know, and that's what I'm enjoying and sampling on and on and on. So. Um, at 10%, this is, it's good. You know, nothing really off about this at all. Uh, nothing really. You know, negative about this wine. I think this is just as this is just as good, if anything, than anything I've had before. Um, you know, I say you know, the popularity of red wine. Of course, uh, I don't know if any of y'all may remember uh, going back nineteen ninety two. I do remember this because I was home with my mom and my dad. We were watching this. I was 60, sixty minutes about the French paradox. The benefits of red wine and what it what it can do to, for you and can do for your health. And since that report aired in 1992, yes, 1992, that's going back, I don't know, 20, maybe 30 plus years when that story came out. Yeah. Whatever, 2019, we're in right now. 2012, 1992. 20, 22, and here we got 2019, 27 years ago when that story came out. Yeah, 2012, you know, you know, when that story came out, many folks, you know, 28, 29, 30, yeah. Um, that red wine, the popular red wine has grown significantly. I love, I love wine just as much as the next person. You know, I do I do enjoy some white from time to time. You know, Riesling definitely goes well with barbecue ribs. Um, some, uh, I'm not big on Chardonnays. I'm not big on white Zinfandels either. Uh, again, the other day, Jay and, um, John and Neely, we're going to do a review about this. And James P. Madonna, uh, Ronald J. Terrio, Louisiana Beer Reviews, John and Neely, his channel, do some reviews of this. And um, I put Carlo Rossi White Ziffendale, but I couldn't get it in my area. John and Neely could not get it in his area, but Jay, as well as James, could get it for whatever the reason, I guess. Maybe because market size or whatever, or maybe because the name of the cities. You know, James is in New York City and New Orleans, Louisiana. Need I say more? You know, I guess New Orleans is a little more upgrade than Mobile, Alabama, where I'm at. Mm. But in any event, um, yeah, and this is a good one you can share with friends, family members. It is perfect for any type of season. Fall, winter, summer, spring, sangria, it's chilled. You can have it. And again, the wines I've been drinking, you know, like the Rio Nilabrisco, as I mentioned, that compare with anything. So chili, tacos, chicken wings, fried fish, you know. Anything you could think of, those are the wines I like to sample and have. But at the end of the day, I will buy the wines that I know that if I'm going to have a steak that night or some spaghetti and meatballs or maybe even some spaghetti with some big ziti or whatever it is, I know I'm going to have this wine, have something more semi-dry a Cabernet, a Burgundy, a, Bur a Bolo, whatever it is, you know, uh, something more drier, something a little more bold, something that has a little more kick ass to it that will, excuse me, kick butt to it that will give me that like, you know, yeah, this is good with it. Just like steak or, or a nice, you know, burger with, you know, whatever, you know, so. But, um, 
this is just this is all good, you know. Again, they never have done anything that has been horrible. Not that anything that has ever been out of line. This is really one of the things that really has made them stand out and made them unique. So, uh, but anyway, so my view on this wine right here, the Colorado Sangria, I'm going to give this a A plus score. Yes, it's a table wine, but I'm sure people think it's called swill or trash wine. Yeah, we all love to play this sort of amount of money to play for wines, but for this, I will give this a solid A. That would be a 9.1 score for this. The Colorado Sangria, very good, perfect, any type of year. Join us beer, the beer ramble. Wine ramble, tune keep on watching always. Cheers. Live, laugh, love, even with sangria, because I love me a sangria once in a while, don't we all? With any type of food, right? Right.